Greeting, astrophiles. This is Pat Cosgrove for Cosgrove's Cosmos with another update on my observatory project. As you can see, we're still in the grips of winter with heavy snow and very cold temperatures. It's a frosty 12 degrees right now, and this has slowed down some aspects of the project, but we have completed the electrical installation, and we're going to talk about that today. So, let's get started. The electricians were scheduled to come in the next day and we had to do some prep so that they could do their work. Part of that had to do with removing the forms around the piers so the outlets there could be mounted properly. With the forms out of the way, we now had clear access to both the pier foundation and the slab area. The first step was bringing power from the house to the building. In order to do this, a trench had to be cut using a cutting tool. Of course, the day this was scheduled to happen also happened to be the day of a bit of a blizzard, so that made things a little bit more interesting. They literally had to shovel the snow off the path they were cutting, then they used their trench cutter to cut a slot in the lawn between the observatory and the house about 180 feet. Fortunately, the ground wasn't frozen yet, so it wasn't too bad cutting. But we did find areas that had a lot of cobbles, and those stones really caused a lot of problems for the trencher. And sometimes we ran into some big stones that had to be dug out of the way. In one particular point, we ran into a veritable boulder, and one poor guy had to really work hard to lever it free. With the trench cut, Two conduits were run between the observatory and the house, one for power and one for ethernet lines. The conduit was glued into place and dropped into the hole, and then a cautionary red flag was draped on top of it so that if anyone was digging across it, they would encounter that before they encountered the conduit. The conduit ran underground until it came to one of the main supports for the deck. Then the conduit ran up that, then across the bottom of the deck into the house itself. A shop vac was applied to the conduit in the house and that pulled a lightweight line through, which was then used to pull the power cable and the ethernet cables back up to the observatory. This is just a quick video under uncertain lighting. It's kind of a dark, dreary day. I wanted to show how the electrical installation in the observatory went. We're looking at right now the main panel. The main panel is a waterproof panel, and the uh, thick conduit coming up to it is the feed lines, and the smaller conduits coming down are actually distributing under the slab to the various outlets and circuits uh, that are in the observatory. Um, you'll notice another line coming over here, another outlet with a curved cable. Uh, that's going to be providing power to my router for my Wi-Fi, which will be going right in this empty spot there. This conduit is bringing up three Ethernet lines from the house. I'll only be using one, the other two are redundant. Now, bringing power to the various aspects of the observatory, let's start first with the piers. Each of the piers has a steel stanchion pipe, which is bolted right into the concrete foundation. And with it, there is an outlet uh, for every particular pier. So I'll be able to plug in and give power to the drive in the main system. Um, this is a common 20 amp circuit, which is more than enough to handle the four piers that I have mounted up here. Uh, then over on this wall, I have two four gang switches coming up right here. My plan is to put in a countertop and some cabinets in here. Those are going to be uh, above countertop, and so it will support that. We come over here. We have a very heavy duty line coming in. This is going to be for the motor for the uh, driving the observatory roof, which will be mounted over in this corner. And so that's a dedicated 20 amp line. There's a secondary 20 amp line in there as well. Uh, that's going to be uh, for either running a space heater, um, a uh, cooler or a dehumidifier, something that has a pretty good draw. Then for each of the walls, I have an outlet there, I have an outlet there, and I have an outlet there. 
over near the door, I have a series of three switches. This switch is going to be handling an outdoor light. This will handle a set of red LED string lights, which will provide some low level illumination when I need to come into the observatory while I'm operating and I want very low light just so I don't trip on things. This one is going to be uh, driving a white LED string of lights, which will be kind of the white lighting I'm going to bring in. And then these two outlets up in here are for the string lights. I'll be, pring, I'll be pl plugging in them there and then stringing them around the top of the wall for the observatory. Coming off here is a feed to the outside. We'll look at that in a minute. That's for an outside light. This is a fixture for an outdoor porch light. And I'm going to be having a light which is Wi-Fi controlled. And you can change the color and intensity, which I thought was going to be appropriate. And then finally, I do have one exterior outlet that's going to be right there. Uh, if we ever set up a pad and want to run some telescopes outside the observatory, it's kind of nice to have power coming outside. The last thing I added here was a waterproof Wi-Fi enclosure. And I have an Asus Wi-Fi mesh node mounted in here using the Ethernet connection with the house as the main backbone for the mesh network. And I'm running off the power supply before. So now I have good Wi-Fi permeating the observatory. And uh, that'll be important for the way I plan to operate things as we go forward. So now we have the observatory pretty much weatherproof, and we have full electrical service installed in the observatory. The next step involves getting the drive system installed and the manual lockdowns in place. Also, we need to get the vinyl on the outside of the building. That may take a little bit with the holidays coming up and scheduling, and we need a day where the snow is off the roof and reasonable weather so that we can open the roof and do the work needed to install the drive system. But that will come in its time, so stay tuned. So this is Pat Cosgrove signing off for Cosgrove's Cosmos, wishing you clear skies and excellent seeing.